Okay. Whenever you're ready. All right. So thanks for joining us today, guys, for our director's meeting. Um, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, this is our guest speaker, Brandon Burbank, who is a mental health advocate, speaker, and author. Um, he was born and raised here in Whatcom County. Um, he has his AA in Arts and Sciences with some business classes, but he also just received his peer-to-peer -peer counselor certification through the Washington Healthcare Authority, uh, which is super exciting. So he is the author of a book called Come Back to Success, A Relentless Commitment for a Better Tomorrow. Um, so he specializes in doing talks on mental health from a peer-to-peer -peer perspective, which we know is just a um, unique and super beneficial approach in the work that we do. Uh, and the title of his speech today is Embracing Your Mental Health. So thank you, Brandon, for joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much, Brittany, for this wonderful opportunity and coordinating this. Um, so I'm really excited because I have a lot of experience around mental health, um, going through a lot of trials and tribulations, challenges, and the ups and downs of life. And so with that being said, I have a lot to kind of really unveil and um, unpackage for us all today. Um, so but with, before I do that, I want to give a little bit of more context about my background story, where I grew up and how I've just been able to like find my own lane, find my own path, and build success. So definitely grew up here in Whatcom County and really just excelled in my youth and had a lot of positive experiences, a lot of positive um, opportunities to really engage in soccer, sports, and just really being able to like get involved with the community uh, through my church as well, going to Cornwall Church at the time. And, and then just like, like excelling in school my grades were pretty well i graduated with a 3.5 gpa and so like to give that that hopefully gives you context to see how you know i long long story short i ended up with the bipolar disorder diagnosis and so with that being said it's like anybody is susceptible in our world today to who has you know a wonderful childhood or just any type of different in, environment and experiences to go through challenges that really change your life and you have to learn how to navigate through that and manage that on your own but also when you know if you are willing to ask for help from you know mental health professionals your family friends and finding a supportive team and a group of people who can help give you feedback and help you stay on pace for your life for happiness and success. Uh, so now with that being said, there's a statistic out there. Uh, according to the National Insti Institute of Mental Health, over 50 million Americans are living with a mental illness. That's a lot of people. If you think about it, in terms of the overall population size is over 300 million people, and we have you know 50 million. So if you look around, you might know somebody, you might be somebody that is is actually going through your own mental health challenges and learning how to manage and work through your own challenges. And so with that being said, as we you know continue to evolve and the world is constantly growing and getting you know just more developed, how are we? asking ourselves these hard questions to help help our friends out, help ourselves out when we are going through a rough patch in our life mentally. And so I've been through a lot of diff different of those child um, trials and tribulations that has really you know forced me to grow up and forced me to challenge my way of thinking to really allowing myself to be happy regardless of, of the challenges and that life brings and the uh, enormous amount of uncertainty change and really like a lot of stress and so many other like negative things that I've been able to you know navigate through and ha yet I'm still able to say you know I'm happy to say who I'm happy for who I am and who you know God made me to be and the person that I am today and it's like when you're able to go through challenges and come out on top and say, you know what, I become a better, stronger, and happier person because of the challenges, it makes that much more rewarding in the long run. So we're going to get into a couple of key components um, that hopefully will help give you more insight onto what I believe has helped me in my life and also what I believe could, you know, my, I'm not saying it's going to help everyone, but it could help some people. And, um, excuse me, 
also by sparking creativity, sparking that challenge for, for that individual to say, what's gonna help me grow? What's gonna help me get out of homelessness or get out of this hospitalization process so that I can you know, get into a, a working environment and being successful and happier in my own life? So it's, it's all about empowerment and positivity because you know when we focus too much on the negative, it really eliminates our ability to find the common things that are happening already that are is you know working for us and in our benefit you know and you know I've been homeless as well so I'm going to talk a little bit that um, uh, as well uh, because of the fact that um, I was living in Southern California and to give you more context I'll go, I'll go more into depth about this but um, I, I returned home because I thought I was going to have some support from family members and it ended up I, I didn't so I, I ended up having to like live in hotel rooms for a little bit and then um, going to like the lighthouse mission uh, the base camp and that was really hard because I'm like I don't want to stay the night here like but I don't have anywhere else to go and then like the financial issue was kind of spiraling out of place in my life as well because I wasn't you know at I didn't have the my finances in order at that point like I do now and so that's where it's like it's really challenged me and, and, and it asked I asked myself how am I gonna get through this like and obviously like I ended up in the hospital a little bit after that. Uh, this was less than a year ago, in fact. And so I'm giving you this more context because this is the Lighthouse Mission Ministries, and you guys are serving the, the you know, the homeless population. And I've seen, I see how they act, and the homeless population is very, you know, just in, from my viewpoint, are very broken people, and they'd have to ask themselves, do they want to get better or not? And it's up to the individual to make that change, to make that challenge for themselves, regardless of whatever pity story that they want to set, that they keep constantly telling themselves for you know all over and over and over again because it's a redundant cycle and so i you know i've gone through my challenges and i've worked on my baggage through therapy through you know mental professionals through god and through like myself and so those are the things that really i asked myself when going through these challenges like how am i going to like what what do I want to leave behind when I when I die and thinking thinking about like I'm 27 years old and I've, I have so much more life to live but it's like the, the things that I've that I've gone through are not pretty and but the fact is I find success in the fact that I can laugh and smile about it about thinking about these difficult situations because it, it didn't defeat me it didn't stop me from like continue to persevere through those momentous moments of trials and tribulations where I asked myself are you gonna continue to push onwards or are you gonna quit so now that was kind of a little bit of context um, now the other point that I wanted to give you guys more insight on are the five components for success that really caters for people I'm gonna stick to people with mental health challenges because I, I was bi I'm bipolar and so there's a lot of people that want to know you know they might be in the hospitalization they might be you know getting through some some type of problem in their life and they're trying to find stability and sustainability and direction so with that being said the feedback that I'm gonna give you guys today five steps step one develop self-awareness Step two, confide in someone you trust. Step three, take charge of your life. Step four, accept change. And step five, be patient for changes to come. Starting with step one, uh, I'm gonna give you some more context now. Uh, basically, when I was like 22, I was, yeah, 22, I was just getting out of a hospitalization situation. Uh, again, I've had many in my lifetime, but the fact of the matter is each one is different. Each has different reasons, different circumstances, different times for a recovery, but as I continued to like go through these you know, challenges and hospitalizations and being part of the mental health system, I started to ask myself, you know what, I, I have much more in, in store of what I feel like I can accomplish, feel like what I can achieve and what I can provide a value towards other people. I'm really good at talking. I love to just talk to people about success and sometimes too much, but that's okay. <laughs> but as far as like just being happy and trying to find my own lane, it took a lot of time, but once I 
started to quit my job at Fred Meyer. I was working at Fred Meyer here locally, living at home with my parents. And then I started doing car sales. And that was a wonderful experience as well. Different environments, sales. So, but then I asked myself, you know what, I'm getting, I feel like I'm just kind of spreading my wheels here. And I was also doing BTC at the time, which I never finished. But as far as like the, the momentum that I was creating was building for success to moving to different like places like Southern California, Seattle. And so it wasn't long after that that I'm bringing this all up as an, an example of developing self-awareness. As you can see, I, I tried a lot of different things. And guess what? A lot of things didn't work out. A lot of things didn't really, weren't really up my alley. What I, I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be great at this, but it didn't work out. But it's, it's that's my point is like, if you develop self-awareness and have a strong sense of interest and desire to better yourself and to like ask yourself, how can I get better today? And like, even today I was on a run before this and I was like, you know, I'm so excited to talk and really just share my feedback. And not everybody loves to hear what I have to say, which I recognize and I respect because you know what, that's, that's their opinion and I'm gonna do my thing, stay in my own lane and I know it's gonna help a lot of people. And that's really the bottom line is really, but with self-awareness, there's a couple of different ideas as well that really goes into alignment with that um, component topic. And that is um, like trusting your gut instincts. So there's been many times and when, you know, we all know this, when you're in your really, uh, you know, a dark place or just a struggling place in a moment in your life and you have to ask yourself, how am I going to get through this? What do I need to do? Rather than just asking other people, you got you to gotta make the decision for yourself. And that's called discernment. Uh, it's, it's taken me a long time to learn this skill and this ability to asking myself real and logical questions. What's best for me, not for X, Y, Z, this person to pleasing this person or that or this or that. It's like asking myself, how is this going to help me benefit my life and continuing to be on pace towards the person that I want to become? And, and that's really where you can ask, make that d distinguished uh, difference between good decisions and bad decisions that are helpful for your growth. Um, and then as far as the next, the next, the second topic, which I'm going to outline is confiding in someone you trust. So one second, I got to blow my nose. Sorry. Whoops. Thank you. Um, so as far as the, the, second, the second thing goes, which is confiding in someone you trust, um, I'm going to give you another ex tangible example of something that I had to face really with, uh, with a lot of open-mindedness and asking myself, how am I going to get through this? This is a difficult situation. But with God and with my own abilities to ask myself, how can I get overcome this? It can get better. Uh, and so that is essentially... Um, I was in a hospitalization situation in like 2017, and then I had to uh, go to the halfway house at the like, Lake Wacom Center. Um, so, and that was a very difficult experience at, at the age of like 20 years old, where I'm just like so confused and I felt abandoned, I felt lost, I felt really confused, I felt really unsure of what the future was holding in my life because there were so many just challenges that I had to navigate through by myself. And, but that's, through those challenges, I started to see that, wow, this is maybe something that I can like shed my gifts in to help other people and inspire people and help make a difference in their life. And so with that being said, the, the topic though is confide in someone you trust. Another example with that is really the idea of when I studied abroad in Barcelona, Spain back in 2015, I returned home and I was very lost. I was very confused and upset with the world and with myself and like confused about what I'm doing with myself because I've built so much success in my youth and I had to go through all these changes and like I paid for my, whole, my um, study abroad trip by myself through like working at jobs and just fundraising by myself. And the, the trip was a success, but then I came home and I felt really like disconnected 
and I felt like I didn't want to connect with people. And so there was another example with like uh, a therapist that I was seeing and she was asking me a bunch of questions and I was just like not wanting to participate. And it was really, it's, it's disappointing, but I'm not gonna, I don't regret it because it's made me who I am. And so I'm giving you this as an example because confiding in someone you trust for those that are struggling with their mental health and that need feedback like to help them work on their own problems, that's very helpful. And that's very transformative for people's life. Uh, being heard and feeling like you're heard in, you know, in a world where we're always doing something and we're always busy, is so valuable and so I know that there's a lot of stigma around like mental health and therapists and um, you know XYZ around that mental health that it really makes it hard for some people to want to ask themselves how do I get help how do I ask for help but by confiding in someone you trust and being vulnerable with another person that you trust as well. That's an important part. So, and being mindful about who you choose to really open your heart up and asking yourself these hard questions. What's gonna make me feel better today? What's gonna make me get better so I can continue to you know, change this trend, whether it's, if it's not good, and helping me continue to be the best version of myself. Um, okay, so step three, take charge of your life. All right, so yeah, like I don't like I said, I don't speak like really too negative because I don't like to just be in the negativity of life and what's like, you know, it's just a matter of how you focus on approach your day, approach your problems. That makes a hundred percent of the difference in in my life, and I think that it, it it can make a lot of difference in other people's life as well, because when they ask themselves how to navigate through problems people just do it with a negative or closed mind and they don't ask themselves how can that, how can this get better how can i grow how can i become a happier person than i was yesterday and just find sustainability and that's really i by asking open ended questions that are really drawing out your creativity is what is so vital for our growth and for our own happiness and and growth and and wellness as well but with, with taking charge of your life, I'm gonna give you more context with another perspective. Um, <laughs> so I was, I was living in Bellingham, like I told you, and I went, after doing car sales, I moved to Seattle. I lived in Seattle for 10 months, and then I moved to Southern California, then Long Beach area, LA County, and I was living there for over two years. And boy, has it been a journey. Boy, has there been a lot of ups and downs. There's been a lot of, you know, ways that I've grown. I, I, I attended um, NSA Influence uh, last year for the Youth Leadership Conference where I was able to, you know, talk to the kids a little bit about mental health and just to also partake in the general sessions as well. So there's just so many different abundant of risks, calculated risks that I've taken in my journey because I wanted to help other people on stage and help make a difference on in their lives directly. And so now I brought that up as a, as a kind of to give you more context about how I successfully have taken charge of my life when I went through these challenges with mental health, and here I am, I've been able to like be on stage and talking about my str struggles in a very vulnerable place, <laughs> and being able to be honest with myself about like, you know, is this really what you want? Because there's other decisions that I've decided not to do in, in order to continue to f build momentum as a speaker and build success. Now, that is a profession. But I'm talking about like more per, at a more personal level with people who are struggling with their mental health, they're going to be asking themselves, how do I get like how do I get out of the hospital and start working on like or how do I not be homeless? And that and that's where that's where the, the the hope it comes into play, because there's a lot of good news that I can share about the whole idea with. Um, to those that are, feel like they're struggling, you have to ask them, I have, like, if I was talking to somebody who's homeless right now, I'd be asking myself, like, you know, why are, why are, you, why are you in that position right now? What has led you down that road? And mo many of the times, I would say, it's up to the individual, if they're an adult, obviously, but if it's a child, it's a totally different ball game. And so that's where 
not being in a victimhood to your circumstances is a great place to start to change your overall outlook on your life and seeing the beauty of what is around us every single day that where life is filled with opportunity and chances to change so now we're going to go back to the step four uh, which is accepting change so i talked a little bit about the halfway house and what that really did to my life you know psychologically it was not a pleasant experience like i was like i was this 20 year old that was kid that was like you know about around very severely mentally ill people and didn't have any type of you know socialization and involvement with people i didn't have my car at the time either so it was very you know isolating um, but what I can tell you from what I learned from that was I learned how to accept change. So in, in spite of those challenges that were very difficult, I learned to accept that this is what's going on in my life right now. This is the reality. So how do I accept this and continue to move forward and work towards developing a better and a healthier me? So as a result, I, I was blessed with the opportunity to go to Skyland Trail uh, Mental Health Residential uh, Treatment Center in Atlanta, Georgia. And so that was a great chance to just really learn from other people as well as learning for myself what it means to have a condition like bipolar disorder and how to work through that. And even though I'll admit at that time, that was in 2017, 2017 2018, that was a difficult time because I'm like, I don't want to accept this diagnosis. That, that was, you know, that was like, what, six years ago? And so because of that, it's like, there's a lot of people in this world who might be diagnosed or who might be undiagnosed and who are not willing to accept that in their own life. And my take on that is it took me years to do that. Like, if six years ago, I would have been like, just not willing to talk about it or just not wanting to do that. But I've taken the, the role and the stewardship of, radical acceptance is the word I like to say because what that does is it helps me acknowledge this is what I have this is what I'm dealing with and so I take the responsibility of putting myself up at a higher level of responsibility for myself than other people who are going through challenges or who might not have the same similar mental health challenges as myself um, and then wrapping up to the last part which is be patient for changes to come uh, th to give you a little bit more context, when I was in Southern California, uh, so I, wrote, I published my book in 2021, and I, I, that was when I was, I started doing, working on it when I was in Seattle, and, but it's like I just started to ask myself, how do I you know, make a difference? And also like, you know, ha I, have, I feel like I have a lot of gifts. And y other people can judge me all they want and that's fine. And I've had that happen many times before because when you're an up and coming speaker and you want to make a difference and have a lot of perspe perspective and ideas to share, not everybody's going to accept what you have to say and that's okay and I'm, I'm, a, I'm acknowledging that. But I'm also acknowledging that you know, the patience that I've had that, that's required to get to this point in my life. And for those people out there that are struggling with their mental health, you know, if, if you just, if you're, if you're in a hospital now and you're like, okay, how do I get through that? It's one day at a time. I mean, that's the best way I can tell you is asking yourself, you know, maybe you went for a walk today, that's a win. Maybe you went for a run today, that's a win. Maybe you went and bought groceries for yourself or learning how to rent for yourself for the first time in your life. Those are different situations and circumstances. And so comparison towards other people is a bad thing to do in my life, in my opinion. And so um, definitely in wrapping up this video or this uh, perspective and feedback for you guys, I wanted to just say that the five steps again. Step one, develop self-awareness. Step two, confide in someone you trust. Step three, take charge of your life. Step four, accept change. And step five, be patient for changes to come. Thank you. And then um, uh, we can open it up for Q&A now. Well, I am excited to read your book. I purchased a copy when we met for the first time. Um, so I've skinned some of that. And I think I maybe even handed it to somebody to read ahead of me. But I'm curious if um, you can unpack this a little bit. So we, of course, we work with a lot of folks who are kind of in the stage of um, 
maybe some willingness to accept a diagnosis, maybe not, but in those really tough moments, was there something that a provider or that shared confidant uh, said to you or imparted to you, or was there some sort of a mantra that you kind of had to tell yourself in those toughest of moments? Um, well, <clears throat> there's this book that has helped me personally, and it's called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And I started reading it about two years ago when I was in Southern California. And there's a lot of components around that book that really helps people to change their mindset on their own approach towards money, but then also towards like their life. Because so many people live in a life with where they're feeling like they're a victimhood to their circumstances. And so there's a lot of quotes in that book. Um, I'm trying to think of, uh, winners never quit and quitters never win. That's one that I uh, I've, I took on when I was in the hospital, you know, less than a year ago, and it helped me because, you know, there was days when I'm like, why am I here, and I'm just confused on what's, how do I overcome this? So. I was also curious on um, when you were in the phase of um, accepting some services, some of the day services at Lighthouse Mission at base camp, but not necessarily feeling like you wanted to stay there. Um, from, from a guest perspective, as somebody who was kind of new to Lighthouse in that arena, um, what, did it, what did it feel like as a first timer? Was it scary? What made it scary? Honestly, I would say for me, what I felt like I was like, did not know what I was getting into at all. Mm -hmm. And so I had to really like ask myself like, is this what I want? Because I had the choice of like, you know, either going to the hospital or continuing to be homeless. Mm -hmm. And so I basically, with, with that option to, for the Lighthouse mission, I was like, no, I, I, I'm not familiar with this. I don't think, I think this would really do a lot of psychological damage on my life. And so that's why I went to the hospitalization as another option, which, you know, it, 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 it was a difficult situation in itself. And so, um, yeah, I had, that would be my answer. I just want to say that was a great talk. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. That was vulnerable. You look great. You're obviously very well organized. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if you practice this or not, but it looks like you put a lot of work into um, your presentation here. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's very hopeful, just as I know for many of our folks um, going through, I think might be in any of these steps um, of, of these five steps that you have here, but just seeing that hope of like, wow, how much you've overcome as a person and like just even your own acceptance of your diagnosis. And it sounds like that was a pivotal point in your life of like moving forward and getting um, some traction under your feet. Um, I think honestly what it did for me was it helped me discover my passion. Yeah. Like it helped me discover more of my purpose. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. one thing that many people in this world lack. And, and that's why mm -hmm. they're so miserable or unhappy in their life. You know, of course life is challenging, but if you find something that it doesn't feel like work or that feels like it's a journey, like every day, <laughs> then trust me, you're going to be a lot happier than you could, than you are now. I love step five too, like mm -hmm. waiting for change, mm -hmm. patient, wait for change. I feel like there's a lot that could be said about that. Yeah. Anything else? <clears throat> I've, I knew you a while ago, um, so I'm just kind of curious like what, you're, what else you've been up to now, like have you been speaking to a lot of other groups and stuff or? Yeah, so I speak tomorrow in Auburn, Washington, oh, nice. uh, for the Rotary Club, and then Seattle for the Seattle City Rotaract Club on Thursday. That's awesome. Cool. Very, very cool. That's awesome. And then I have several other in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to Portland in October, and so I'm really blessed to, for these opportunities because, and I treat them as every day is a new experience, a new opportunity to talk to different people, and hopefully they, they like my message and just continuing to go with that um, positive idea.
Thanks. All right. We'll wrap it up. I'll cut the, the cameras now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.